The street girl has great heart and hardihood. She has to because of the hazards in the street. The call girl is usually some brittle kitten uh, who wants to be pampered. And she, of course, uh, prefers the gigolo type uh, fellow who uh, accepts a portion of the money and who does not really control his woman. Holding a stable getter requires the pimp to keep each individual member of the stable in apparent competition. The competitive spirit in women, particularly uh, prostitutes, is extremely high. So many unnecessary changes, girl. I am so tired and worn out. But you ain't through for the night yet, is you? You think so, huh? <laughs> Run your mouth. Run yeah, your mouth. I know so. Okay. I know okay. so. Okay, you know you ain't by yourself. All right. All right. I'm mm -hmm. speaking by myself right now. Uh, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's right. You got that uh, right. I thought you had it once today. Hmm. Smart Don't think you got a lot to learn. You don't know worry about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I ain't got nothing to say, my friend. I got a long you, way you to go smart. and You're much more smart, to do. Listen, smart, I got a long way to go and much more to do, but it ain't gonna be done tonight. Uh, oh, you, oh, what y'all at? Fat mouth. I'm sick. Hey, I'm sick. I'm sick of uh, Mabel. It's me that's talking to you. Scared to talk to me? Look, why don't we just look at the window or something? Yeah. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm disgusted. I just don't, you know. All of us, honey, all of us. Well, I don't know. Hey, where you going? I'll be back, honey. When I asked you a question, you answered. So y'all just get off my cage. Hey, I, I, I heard about a new game. Let's play it. It's called oh. Silence. Shut up. I bet you had your <laughs> She thinks she's really cute up there. I you know how she done had her. Uh, the dream where I'm sitting, baby. The life of a pimp is unremitting tension and pressures. Uh, a, a pimp uh, lives on the precipice of disaster. I think he's the most hated and feared creature of the underworld because of his uh, the sexual aspects of his uh, profession. They're all going to be through if you don't be quiet. I became a pimp uh, primarily because of the, uh, the influence of of well-heeled pimps and other hustlers during uh, a period of dire poverty in my life. And I feel that uh, I was influenced by the flashy glamour, the uh, infestation of diamonds on these uh, hustlers, and also by their big flashy cars. And I wanted a sense of importance. And uh, I was a pimp for about 25 years. 30 years. Now, when I first uh, got to Chicago, I had this wild dream of picking the brain of the town's top pimp, and eventually I did. In retrospect now, I suppose I could say that, that I wanted to be like God for a whore, you see. And my total image of myself was that I was some sort of black, evil Swingali. My image among my contemporaries and fellow pimps and among whores was that I had class. Okay, meet me at 55th and Cottage Grove in about 10 minutes, okay? Okay. What do you feel And what do I do besides suffer? Are you have your studies at UCLA? 24 hours a day, Dad? 
darling, get involved. Find something outside of your own problems to worry about, something important, something worthwhile. What you need is to feel that you're making a real... Don't you have to meet a trick in five minutes? Each one of I'll make it, I'll make it. ...would make a great contribution to world peace by serving through the United Nations. As ambassador to the United Nations, I'm recruiting potential peace heroes. Mabel, you're going to miss that trick if you don't get moving. Your strong body. The trick ain't going nowhere, Daddy. Don't worry about it, okay? Do the greatest job ever attempted by man. Now the future is in your hands. What are you going to do about it? You've just heard an address by Ambassador John Post, representative to the United Nations. <laughs> Pimps uh, who, who commit uh, violence on whores or the stable uh, are suffering from insecurity. Uh, he's lost his power over that particular girl in the stable. The dumbest broad uh, will take advantage of that. Uh, normally, a pimp doesn't develop paranoia until after he's had lots of track action. By that I mean lots of mileage with whores. Uh, he, he gets to the point where he believes whores are so devious and so cunning because he's, he's copped and he's blown so many that his, his, his mind rots. And, and he himself has played so much con on the whore. He's, he's lied to the whore so much that he doesn't know a lie from the truth. Yeah, baby. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, Mabel, what's the matter, honey? I got that. What's the matter with you? It's cold, baby. Wait, 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 wait. Take care of me. Honey, Tina's sick. She got pains in her stomach or something, baby. Damn in the world under 22 that gets sick. Don't you know that? Now get out of my face. Chanel, she's really sick. I gotta get Honey, Tina's really sick. We gotta get a doctor, baby. Bring her upstairs. he should be treated uh, as an ill man and as a victim of this racist white society uh, that, uh, that makes possible uh, his street poisoning, uh, that makes possible the rotting uh, uh, inside his head. Um, I think that uh, what we need to do if we deprive the pimp and if young women can be dissuaded, you see, then the pimp is going to have to find some other way to make a living like uh, till tapping or let him play the con on the white folks downtown, you know. If prostitution were legalized, that the top echelon pimps uh, would do well uh, because they'd have the 
uh, experience and expertise necessary to to organize and to open houses. Uh, what it would do also, uh, it would mean that recruitment would be much easier uh, for pimps. Uh, it would mean that the hazards, uh, now when a pimp turns out a girl, he's got to turn out in the street, more or less. Uh, with the houses, you see, uh, open and, and legal, uh, it would mean that a girl wouldn't have to be put through the kind of comprehensive training uh, that one must give a street girl. Uh, it would mean that pimps could just take a girl out of a, uh, hypothetically, out of a restaurant uh, today and uh, this evening, and tomorrow she'd be uh, working in the house. Because all one need do is know how to lie down and open one's legs, you see, which is not a bit like it is in the street. What is the life of a prostitute like? It's got to be holy hell. Uh, the booby traps in the street, the death traps in the street for a prostitute. Uh, her life, uh, the life of a prostitute is filled with tension and the pressure of the pimp. Uh, many pimps uh, insist upon a minimum. Uh, that means that a girl cannot show unless she's got a C note. C note, uh, if she's flat backing. Uh, flat backing means uh, just straight sex, you know, on your back. Uh, C note is $100. Why does a prostitute need a pimp? Most of the prostitutes that I've known and the ones that I've controlled uh, needed me uh, because of my notoriety. Uh, they were uh, fascinated and bewitched. Uh, by my phony glamour, uh, the poisonous pimp charisma, and they lived in my reflected glory, so to speak. It gave them a sense of importance. The most brutal pimps, uh, illiterate, low IQ people, who enforces his, um, his rules and regulations with his fist because he doesn't know the intricacies of psychology. The threat of violence has always been much more potent, I've found, uh, in my experience. Pimps and whores today are anachronisms in the face of the kind of thing that has occurred in, in black America since Malcolm X. He defined our, our enemies, I should say. And our enemies are both within and without. Malcolm X defined the atrocity that pimping is, that the exploitation of the black woman is. Long way from where you're supposed to be. What an asshole. I thought you ain't supposed to think. Uh, you know, Brother Beck, uh, your autobiography, Pimp, uh, uh, which you wrote, uh, it may have encouraged a lot of young brothers to become, uh, to become pimps. How do you feel about this? Well, I think uh, the fact that uh, my autobiography, Pimp, the story of my life, the book, I think it's very unfortunate uh, that there have been many uh, misguided uh, young black men who should know better, who miss the the whole message in the book, and that was that, that I was a pretty uh, bright guy, uh, and yet uh, nothing good came to me except the penitentiary and, and a heroin habit uh, and misery and the, and the complete waste of my life. And it, it's, it's just incredible that, um, but of course, uh, when you're street poisoned, uh, a youngster reads the, reads the book and he rationalizes. You see, uh, we must have a rationale for stupidity. Anytime we do something stupid, we first got to convince ourselves that we've got to do that stupid thing. So they rationalize, oh, this stud, uh, I'm hipper than this. Uh, I won't get cracked. You know, I won't get caught. I won't, 
I won't go to, to the joint. I won't go to the penitentiary. I won't use drugs. I won't use heroin. I won't get hooked. I won't be a junkie. I'll be cooler, you know. I said, the dude is righteous, but I'm more righteous. You know, I said, I'm more together than this dude. So this dude is old, you know. You say, this is the rationale. And that's unfortunate. Uh, in L.A., where I've been living uh, for the last 10, 10 years, uh, just hordes of youngsters uh, approach me on the street. Um, and they uh, try to pick my brain for the uh, hidden treasures they think are buried inside my skull. And... Uh, I always slap their wrist before they reach for it. And I try to um, dissuade them. But if you're street poison, I mean, you just street poison. And you ain't going to give up your stupid dream of something for nothing. I stupidly tried to get something for nothing. And any time that you try to get something for nothing, you're going to suffer. One way or another. You know. What happens to pimps and prostitutes when they become old? The pimps become bookies, bums, uh, winos, dope fiends, but many of them uh, die in joints, penitentiaries. The women, uh, they become lesbians, pimping lesbians, I might add, uh, bordello operators, patients in mental hospitals as do uh, many of the pimps. Yeah, well, I hope this won't mind asking you in here for a drink after meeting you on the street there. No, I'm not having a drink, but where is it to go? Well, I think I'm entitled to have a drink with you since I haven't seen you in 14 years. Oh, sure, glad to see you too, behind that time. Yeah, I always had a, a lot of respect for you when, uh, when you were my woman. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I had you, you were, you know, a commando. Oh, yeah? Behind 14 years? Well, I'm with you. I mean, I ain't pimping. I ain't trying to come back now and, you know, cop. But, more. but if you're working, I don't want to keep the lady from my uh, from work. Well, I'm working. I'm a nurse of days. I never thought you'd square out. You've been you working know, seven you, years. You were gone the hole for the game, you know? Well, there was money in the day. It wasn't all that killing. Tell me, uh, baby, just, just why did you square out? Everything was getting rough out there behind doing 10 to 15 years of time to square. And the way they're killing trees out there, too. That's why I squared up. You mean the way they're killing girls? The way tricks, they, the tricks, yeah, yes. the way they're killing girls and taking their money. Anybody that we know? Them in the head. Sure, quite a few people. And so I just rather go on to work and then be bothered with them. And then I got the 10 to 15 for selling narcotics and ain't sold nothing. You got crossed. Got crossed because I wouldn't be a pigeon. Because I never smoked and never used in my life. That's where I squared up behind that. I'm scared of dying. There's nothing happening in the streets. And horn ain't no money in horn either. Because they don't want to spend no money. And it ain't worth it. They take you to bed and give you the money, and as soon as you lay down, they take it back, get your head, and go on about the business. That's why I squared up. Might not wake up the next morning. Sometimes you're scared, trust your own man, he might put a pillow over your head or something. So you know when you're working every day, punch your clock, you got that bread. It's mine. And I got that every week. I'm gonna get out here on the corner and say, well, I'm gonna get a loaf of bread. Man, it's me. So that's the way life is. But everybody wakes up sooner or later. Anytime you do 15 years, you wake up. Because you can't wear them bars out. And I'm here tonight appearing before you, a well individual, free of the street poison that put me into the kind of position where I brutalized and exploited our black queens. You have to have a realization that when you exploit your own kind, that you are in effect counter-revolutionary, that you are hobbling and crippling the struggle of black people for freedom and dignity. Robert Beck, 
Iceberg Slim, ex-pimp, crusades against what he calls negative glamour. He encourages young black brothers to take a sister off the corner. Pimping is not where it's at. All you people out there who think you're cool, let me tell you, you ain't got nobody to fool. There are women out there that hate to be hurt. Men out there that are treating them like this. I said, let me take off. Hit again. Let me take off. We should use one another We should be more like sisters and brothers Let me take off Say it again Let me take off Take this woman off the corner, brother She can be yours if you want Take this woman off the corner, brother She can be yours if you want Trying to imitate him Let me take off I heard him say Let me take off